Hello, this is Jerry Valeski, Range and Forage Specialist with UNL West Central Research and Extension Center in North Platte. Today's webinar, we're going to be talking about fertilizer and water management for irrigated pasture. Uh, this is the third in a four-part series of webinars on irrigated pasture. As far as the fertility goes, uh, nitrogen is by far or has the potential to be the, the most limiting in, in terms of an irrigated grass pasture. A photo here just shows some uh, contrast between plots. Uh, here on the left, a plot that has had adequate nitrogen and those on its immediate right are obviously deficient in nitrogen, show, showing the pretty classical um, signs of nitrogen deficiency in that they, they are um, much lighter in green or almost yellow in color with less thrifty growth compared to the fertilized example there. But when it comes to uh, nitrogen, uh, fully irrigated cool season grasses uh, in trials, it's been shown that you can get a forage yield response using up to 200 or even 250 pounds of nitrogen per acre. In most cases, uh, under grazing, we don't see that much applied, and I'll show you a little bit more data related to that. But with the fertilizer management, uh, doing split applications is, is typically a good practice. Um, with uh, the spring time of the year being a target for about the 50% of the nitrogen that would be applied during that growing season. And this is to a better time or match the time when those cool seasons grasses are most actively growing. Another 25% could be applied in the summer and the remaining 25% in late summer and early fall. Um, spoon feeding split applications if a uh, pivot is, is um, equipped for fertigation, fertigation that's, that's a very good uh, practice that, that could be done. Also, one can adjust the timing of the applications with the forage need. And the last thing to keep in mind is that the, the fertilizer level really must correspond with whatever level of irrigation that we are using. Um, some data here just showing a uh, nitrogen response to, um, or excuse me, grass response to four different levels of nitrogen, anywhere from zero or none up to 300 pounds per acre. And you can see in the uh, results here that in the case of uh, 150 pounds of nitrogen compared to none, we did see more than a, a little bit of a doubling of the yield and a slight additional increase in yield at those um, uh, markedly higher rates. However, when we are up at these levels, say the 225 or higher, uh, the, the economics in terms of the response of the orchard grasses and, and the cost of the fertilizer um, probably doesn't uh, match or, or, or make sense in this case. In another trial here, dealing with a smooth brome and orchard grass mix, uh, we had rates of fertilizer from none all the way up to 300 pounds per acre. And again, very similar. You can see at about this 150 uh, pounds of end uh, rate, uh, we can see you know market improvement compared to no fertilizer, but yet not that much less than those uh, higher rates of 225 and, and 300 pounds per acre. Well, when it comes to uh, phosphorus, uh, the really the only way, good way to get handle on phosphorus is with a soil test. Uh, this particular chart here uh, provides some recommendations uh, for grasses alone and a grass lagoon mixture based on the soil phosphorus level. Uh, here you can say once we're see once we're over roughly uh, the 26 to 30 part per million range, which would be considered a high category, uh, additional phosphorus isn't isn't record for, recommended or even needed for either the the grass alone or the grass to give mixture. Um, a couple of slides here with some data showing uh, uh, phosphorus levels. Uh, this happened to be a particular field where um, we had established cool season grasses back in 2001. Uh, it had been maintained in irrigated cool season grasses all the way through 2008. Our practice of this was we hate it three to four times annually, but each year we did soil sample and looked at the phosphorus level. And one of the things that you can see over time 
uh, from 01 to uh, even to 2008 was that steady annual decline in in the phosphorus level in the soil. And now again, keep in mind that this was a hay system where the that grass hay har was removed at, at harvest. Um, in terms of a, a grazing situation, it might be a little, a little different where we're seeing some of that phosphorus recycled back onto the soil. Another interesting uh, um, bit of data related to uh, that particular field and trial, we also did look at organic matter. And prior to being established in irrigated grass, uh, this field was in a corn corn soybean rotation. And then as we put in and had those perennial grasses for this eight year period, we did notice uh, an increase in the soil organic matter. And that just indicating that with these perennial grasses and the extensive root systems that we have, and each year those root systems do uh, turn over and additional root growth takes place, um, just like above ground growth is occurring, we are seeing improvement in the organic matter. And so one of the things that uh, this does bring to mind that in, in terms of an overall rotation, you know, so this particular field after being in grass a number of years and then put back into corn or, or other grain crops, uh, we would see a first year at least uh, boost in that grain crop because of the fact that they had been in a prairie of grass for a number of years. A little bit of fertilizing grass and the bean mixtures, this can be a little tricky. Of course, uh, the nitrogen is uh, the nutrient that is uh, most often needed by grasses, whereas when it comes to legumes, uh, it is phosphorus. Now, of course, legumes have the ability to fix nitrogen from uh, nodules uh, that are on their root systems. However, um, the you know, exact amount of nitrogen that they fix can be a little bit variable and, and uh, highly hard to determine. Um, some data suggests that with some legumes in there, we might be fixing anywhere from 25 up to 250 pounds of, of nitrogen per acre. However, in most cases, to get substantial um, a nitrogen fixed uh, in this soil, we do have to have a considerable amount of legume out there. So if we had a stand, um, a mixed stand that was maybe 10 or 20% legume, and then um, 90 or 80% grass, uh, the amount of nitrogen being fixed by those legumes, granted it will be some, but still not enough to meet the, the needs of the grasses if we want those grasses to be um, uh, rapidly growing and productive. So uh, just to summarize some of the things on, on the fertilizer uh, bullet list here, soil testing important, uh, I think especially at the, the, uh, during that establishment year to see where we're at before planting, split applications of that nitrogen, spoon, at, spoon feeding uh, does work well, in time fertilizer, uh, nitrogen applications of forage need uh, adjust to the, for those grass and legume mixtures. And then also um, uh, fertilizing, fertilizer level should correspond with whatever level of irrigation that we're using. So by that I mean if we have a, a very limited irrigation type of situation, certainly then the, the fertilizer uh, would need to be adjusted as well. A little bit on irrigation. Um, Primarily, uh, when we're talking about a, a cool season grasses, uh, crop water use are estimated to be about 0.2 to 0.35 inches per year. One of the things that I, uh, I think is fairly important with irrigated grass is that uh, we try to keep them fairly consistent. Uh, uh, the, the, the root systems of uh, cool season grasses are uh, um, oh, uh, fairly extensive. Uh, not necessarily deep, but one of the things is that uh, we go much beyond um, two to three feet, say certainly below three feet, there may be some cool season root down there, but primarily we're talking that the abundance of the roots are within that uh, top one foot to two feet, to two feet at the most. So uh, one of the things on, on irrigation uh, scheduling, I think uh, can be beneficial. 
having a little bit higher frequency of um, irrigation, but of course at lesser amounts. So with the idea there being to try to keep it a little bit more consistent and moist. The other important thing is that uh, um, it is estimated with, with cool season grasses, the total season of water requirements are about 32 to 36 inches per year. And if, for example, at the North Platte location during April to October, we get about 16.7 inches, that's the long term average. So, full irrigation here would then be about 16 to 20 inches of irrigation water, which is considerable. So, I'll talk about uh, four limited uh, scenarios here in just a minute. Uh, this particular chart is for central Nebraska, Broken Bow, but it has the uh, estimated crop water use uh, and it's based on uh, that being 87 percent of alfalfa okay so the cool season grass estimate here based on 87 percent of alfalfa so the monthly total is shown here in the orange bars for april through october in the blue bars we're looking at the long-term average monthly precip so basically the difference between the blue and orange bar would be the amount that would need to be made up by irrigation. So here in April and May, which are typically in April, May, and June, the, the two wettest, wettest months, and it was uh, the least uh, uh, amount of uh, evaporation and those types of things going on, the, the amounts are, are a bit smaller, but certainly when we're in July and August and even September, uh, the difference between those two bars or the amount that would need to be applied as far as irrigation water is quite considerable. Uh, in uh, western Nebraska, data here from Scotts Bluff showing the same information, um, estimated crop water, um, estimated water use, and then the blue bars as far as the average, the total monthly uh, precipitation. And you can see a significant difference in terms of uh, the, the amount needed in ter uh, supplied by irrigation. So one key thing with irrigation, again, is that looking back and remembering this uh, typical uh, growth pattern or growth curve of the cool season grasses and, and knowing that uh, during that month of May and into June, that being the time period where those cool season species do generate or produce a significant amount of their growth. And so we're, if we're on time and applying any uh, water as needed during this time period, it is going to be very efficient irrigation. And so this chart here just shows, um, uh, particularly during the month of May, as being uh, uh, one of uh, the most efficient irrigation period. And then likewise, again, in late summer and, and, and into September, uh, as far as getting the most efficient or the most uh, amount of grass produced from the water we're applying. This chart here just also shows and illustrates that, and it looks at uh, the pounds of uh, dry matter forage produced per inch of water. So that would be both rainfall and irrigation. And you can see here in the spring of the year, we're looking at an efficiency of about 665 pounds uh, produced per inch of water. Whereas in midsummer, it's uh, less than half of that at only 257 pounds of, of dry matter forage produced per, per inch of water. Um, this chart here just showing some soil moisture content at the top two feet, but uh, uh, the black line in, in for this particular soil is a field capacity at about 30%. The red line would be the uh, Wilton point at 10%. And then our objective in case of this uh, particular study we were doing was to keep it at the soil moisture at about 50% of available soil moisture. And then you can just see the no normal up and down uh, trend um, based on rainfall and irrigation and the drawing down that occurred. But again, overall objective was to keep it pretty close to that uh, line of 50% soil moisture, consistently, um, adequately moist. A little bit on irrigated, uh, limited irrigation water. We talked a little bit about the, um, some of the mixes used for 
for very limited water situation. Uh, this again is a intermediate wheatgrass mixture in, in uh, Banner County. And it, in this particular case, it's uh, irrigated only in the spring. And uh, by that I mean uh, May and early June as needed to, uh, uh, to produce that grass. So overall, very little total water is, is used. Uh, this example here shows different strategies uh, and an estimate of the amount of water that might be needed, uh, say, in central Nebraska. So with a full irrigation strategy, um, every month of that April through October period, we might uh, have to irrigate, of course, depending on the rainfall. And if we're average year, we would be right about that 14 to 16 total inches of irrigation water applied. You could have a limited irrigation situation like this where we might irrigate spring and early summer, stop irrigation during the warm part of the summer, not expecting a whole lot of growth, of course, because we stopped irrigation, but then resuming irrigation in uh, late summer and through the fall. With this type of pattern, we might be looking at using nine inches of total water. The second limited situation here, um, similar to number one, but would only have a short irrigation period in late summer and early fall, might bring that total down to seven. And then in a very limited situation here, number three, only April, May, and maybe a little bit into early June, we might uh, consider some, some irrigation and, uh, applied as needed. So overall, we might be only looking at two and a half to maybe like three and a half or four inches at the most. So, just some general tips on um, irrigation, effective in, in irrigation, efficient irrigation management, uh, knowing uh, the seasonal growth patterns of, of the grasses and, and watering, put it, making sure water applied during those critical rapid growth times, uh, and adjust that irrigation according to growth stage. Um, soil moisture indicator is very important. And then again, match those irrigation and fertilizer levels. And then you might adjust irrigation uh, with, with the forage need. For example, if you're at a, a time of the year where you've got plenty of, of growth and pasture out there that uh, you don't need anymore, you don't have enough cattle to keep up with it, you could back off on, on the irrigation. Well, thanks for listening. And again, uh, there are some extension publications with additional information on irrigated pasture that can be found at the UNL Extension website. Or feel free to contact me at area code 308-696-6710.